Hey guys, Anthony, 4 Before Diesel. This is a video, a little bit about, uh, well, we're gonna call it what to look at for when buying a 150 Prado, because look, a lot of this information is gonna be specific to, well, you know, these vehicles in general, the Toyotas, whether it's Prado or Hilux or 120, but this one's specifically on a 150, um, and it's gonna be relevant to most vehicle purchases anyway. Now, what I'd like to say first is, they're awesome vehicles and there's not a lot of, it's not things that are going to happen big, you know, oil leaks and things. It's just, there's a few things that do come up and I'll run through those in the kilometres they come up. But these are the most important things what you're looking for, right? Okay, so the general condition of the vehicle, you've got to be happy with the condition it's been kept in. Have a look underneath it, you know. Is it a dirty pig that's just had a clean up or has it been looked after? You'll tell a lot, a lot of that from the owner of the vehicle. Look at the owner and speak to the owner, see what they say about the car, see if they care about their car or not. Do they just take it down wherever to get it clean or do they actually get in there and love the vehicle and clean it themselves and respect it, right? So that's the first thing. The other thing you're looking for is has it been in an accident? So you need to look at all the body panels, fixings, fittings, bolts and look around for any evidence that it's been in a bingle and that's the part that might be hard for you to pick out because you don't look at vehicles all the time. So you do need to take it to someone and those checks, as I said before, I believe they usually all care no responsibility and that's the way I'd roll. I've got to tell you, I've checked out vehicles for myself and you know, two weeks later when you're working on it, you find things you didn't see. So it does happen um, and it does take time to find things on a vehicle. Same thing with servicing. If, you, if a car comes in and it's got just a whole heap of work it needs on, it hasn't been looked after, it's been run down, you're going to sort of see 80 or 90%. And the other things, it's just kind of hidden in all the mess, you know. You've got to sort of make your way through it slowly. So you can't expect miracles. There's no magic wands to uh, fix vehicles and whatever. We can just do the best we can. So what you're looking for is a vehicle that's got a good full service history. No services missed out. Um, that's the main thing that that maintenance has been done. That it hasn't been in an accident and it's in good clean condition. They're probably some of the most important things. Um, now I'll just run through some of the things that come up starting from let's say from about 150,000 k's because look you're not going to see anything other than the standard service you know and that is like tyres wear it's going to need tyres, brakes, things like that probably suspension but you're going to see vehicles with 150, 200,000 k's with original suspension like that pretty good it's not leaking it still works it's not the end of the world but it's not working well like a new one there wear and tear items you know shockers and struts um, the safety triangle, tyres, brakes and shockers, you know, your tyres grip to the road, your brakes do the stopping and your shockers job, see it's on a spring, springs bounce, don't they? So your shockers job is to reduce that, to buffer that bounce, so to keep your tyres on the ground. It's the safety triangle, okay? So they may need to be replaced, so allow for that. Um, anything else should probably get picked up in roadworthy if it's a safety issue. Uh, with the 1KDs, which that's the majority of these vehicles we deal with and, and what's on the road, I'll mention that the injectors and the injector seats don't last forever, so if you're somewhere buying a vehicle between anything over 150,000 k's, you want to budget for maybe a set of injectors, an intake clean, whatever. So that can be expensive, you know. It can be anything up to about five grand, depending where you go. Uh, full bore retail prices and, and whatever, and rates, which is fair enough, but you can get it cheaper, you know. We do supply those kits and videos on how to do it yourself. If you're that person that's going to do it themselves, we'll back you up with that. Now, so that's probably the two things that you need to take into account, injectors, the seats, intake clean, so engine work like that. I'm not saying it needs it, the car could go to 400,000 k's without anything. You could get lucky, right? There's a lot of luck. Won't be running clean and efficient and quiet, but it, so, you know, does it need it? Well, maybe it doesn't need it. You know, if you're happy with a vehicle that runs average, then it probably doesn't need it. Now, let's get into some other things. This can happen at lower kilometres, but or it can happen higher. The, the front lower control arm. So these are the front lower control arms. See these big arms here, like, you know, bang, that arm there, that's those. They're not that big, really. They're like little twigs compared to a 200 series, but, okay, so, see that bush there? I'm gonna show you, so, see those bushes? They should get picked up in Roadworthy anyway, and it's at the discretion of the tester. Now, they're not that bad. They look really bad. They're quite stretched and whatever. Let's have a look at this side here. That That's getting a lot worse, right? See that one? These bushes, they've got like slots of nothing, if you know. So up there to the right, there's a slot of nothing. At the bottom is where the bush is, and then there's a slot of nothing up to the left. Now, see that bush that's nearly cracked, cracked all the way through? So this is the sort of thing definitely should get picked up in roadworthy and things you've got to watch out for. And why do I tell you about that? 
because they're quite expensive. You can get the bushes replaced. Genuine bushes are worth about 500 bucks for both sides, say four bushes, and then you've got labor to change it. Both R and R the arm and then pressing those in and out can be fun. You can go to suspension places and get aftermarket, maybe cheaper, but I say you've just brought a Toyota, why would you take a quality Japanese item and go aftermarket Chinese, whatever. Look, there's other brands, there's good designs out there. Well, in theory, they're good. But, you know, it's up to you if you want to do that. We just replaced the whole arm because it's a two or 300,000 K thing usually. Um, not always. Sometimes a lot lower, sometimes higher. There's a lot of variables. Um, I would say only replace these as necessary. And when they've got little cracks just starting, let's go and have a look at the other side. Right, if you see, see this one's not, it's all a bit stressed out, but it's not, hasn't actually got that split cracking through at all yet. Sometimes, look, I'd say the most common thing I see is those bushes, they've got a tiny little split at the start of them, but it's not all the way through. So let me see. Now that one's much like the other front one as well. So front lower control arms, you know, you got a budget. They're a thousand bucks each to buy in Australia. You can get them overseas for about a grand plus freight, whatever, plus labor. Look, you got a budget about 1500 bucks if you see those arms split. But as I said, it should be covered under roadworthy. So not a big deal. We already talked about suspension. You. Don't think that I'm not too thorough, because I'm going to skim through this. There's not a lot to see, right? We're talking... I'm going to look over the vehicle myself and then just yell out things as I see them. Drive shafts normally look like this, right? They'll be fine for ages. We don't see problems with those. You're going to have a problem when you have a split boot because you've, you know, been unlucky and got to stick through it or something like that. They start to get a bit messy once they get up around two, three hundred thousand 300,000 and spew a bit of grease past that clamp. I'm not too worried about that. They work fine. They're going to be noisy before anything. So each service, grab that shaft, give it a jiggle in and out, make sure it feels right and normal. The other things that you can look out for is on the tie rod. See the rack end there? See that sweat underneath that boot there? That's most likely caused by a slight leak from the rack. And you quite often get it from either end. It's a very slow leak. I wouldn't be chasing it. There you go. You've got a little bit at each end. It's going to be get costly for you if you start chasing things like that every time even if they're a little bit worse, right? Just monitor your power steering oil level. Now, the other thing you can have while we're talking about the rack is um, the inner rack ends can get a bit of play in them or, um, or they can become loose. So that's something to take into account. You gotta jack up the vehicle and check for play in the front wheel. Um, that can happen at any time, usually the two or 300,000 K thing. And that leads me to the wheel bearings. These front wheel bearings quite often around the 200,000 K mark um, you've just each service got to check for play and li and if you're driving you'll hear the noise right and they do last quite a long time usually I'll say usually with play or noise but we have had them where they go bad really quickly with both play and noise brakes become spongy because of the play and it's obviously the rotors pushing the pads back um, so look that front end stuff we've just spoken about front lower control arm bushes um, that's the biggest one probably Rack ends, racks, you know, don't worry about the rack. It's only a minor leak. I've never seen one pouring. I've never changed a rack. There you go. I've never changed a steering rack on a Prado. Some people are going, yeah, I've done heaps. Well, maybe you're too fussy. I don't know. I only see Prados and I haven't seen issues enough to be warrant replacing them. Also, the power steering pumps can leak a little bit and it leaks into the engine oil, so you won't see an external leak. So if you're wondering why the oil's dropping down, don't just think it's the rack and go and put a rack in it because it could be the power steering pump as well. And I'd suggest that's easy to get out and change and cheaper than a rack. So you want to get it right the first time. Um, like I said, these 1KDs, they don't have oil leaks, they're bone dry. It's just that little plug up there, middle of the picture now. We've spoken about that in other videos. So go and watch those. You gotta watch all the other videos. There's so much information. It's not all in this video. This is just about what to look out for. You can look underneath at the turbo and see if there's a bit of oil on the bottom of it. Sometimes they, this one's nice and dry, beautiful. Sometimes they have a bit of oil on them. I'm not worried about that. I see them come in again, service after service, still looking the same. We're not here to sell you stuff you don't need. Transmissions are awesome. Drive line's awesome, you know. You gotta make sure you do put grease in them though. We have seen them, not personally, but mainly reading stuff online where people have found particularly this front one with a lot of play in it and failing. I'd suggest it hasn't been serviced properly. It's been out in the mud and water, you know. It's called mud equals money. You take it out in the mud and you don't do your maintenance, then it's going to cost you money, right? Even if you do do your maintenance, right? You know, there's nothing to check, right? Okay, down the back here, not much. You know, the rear upper trailing arm bushes can sometimes crack a little bit. They look, you know, not too bad. But once they get up around 300,000, you know, this fuel filler hose, 
on the 150s they're a bit different haven't seen any issues with those yet we'll let you know just stay in touch watching the videos we'll let you know if we see one leaking or cracked it's the 120s this fuel filler hose that goes into the back of the front tank you should just replace it the cost is under hundred dollars for the part and it's two clamps get in there make sure it's clean before you do it okay things you're looking at if you're going to buy the car without a roadworthy well you know you, you want to look at tires and stuff like this vehicle's tires are getting down pretty low um, not ideal you know you want to look at brakes but look we could spend hours going over this vehicle to see what's wrong with it it's not about that Starting from the back of the vehicle moving forward, I'd suggest there's nothing to see mechanically. There's no oil leaks. This is typical. Um, like I said, we, as we said, the front lower control arms sort of got lucky and this is a set that is pretty bad that needs replacing soon. You're really just picking out the condition of the vehicle. Like, so I look underneath this and I go, oh, that's a bit rusty. So it's been, it's been down some tracks or over some grass and whatever, but, but so it's not too bad. It hasn't been washed underneath really well. But it hasn't been parked in bog holes either, right? So this is what this is. This is a genuine vehicle that it gets washed every now and then. It doesn't really get a good wash underneath ever, which is why it's got that... It's kind of like not... Th it's not mud or anything. It's just that build-up of road grime over time. It's gone off-road a little bit and scraped over a few things, but no really big hits or anything. Um, so you've got to be happy with the condition, what it is, how it's been kept, and how it's been used. The main thing you're looking for is you don't want a lemon that's been in a bingle that's had a major repair, you know, so check the WAVA, what is it? Written off vehicle register, W-O-V-R. And um, I think, you know, you, sellers are required to um, tell you that it is a written off, a repairable write-off or whatever the case may be. Um, but look, check that out, you know. There's things you can't look for, like, you know, your alternator could fail any time. It's not a big problem, but it does happen. There's a lot of these cars, so a few, of everything is going to fail. Look, the water pump could be leaking. That's a common thing, but I wouldn't worry about it. You know, just budget yourself. Have a budget there. I'm buying a used car uh, for 20 or 30 grand. It's less than half the price of a new one. There's a lot less interest depreciation. I'm going to have to spend a little bit more in upkeep over the years because it is getting older. It's still going to be cheaper than a new one. Um, so budget yourself, you know, maybe five grand up front to get into a few things you might not spend it all I'm saying have a budget of that don't be surprised if you've got to spend some money it's a full drive it's not a Suzuki Swift you know um, anyway guys that's what I'd be looking out for um, I'm not sure what else I can tell you just have a look around general condition has it been in a bingle you know if, if they're a bit dodgy the people selling it you know walk away mate you know for me I won't buy a car off the wrong person if I go look at a car and I'm going oh, no you know, just see you later, mate. I don't care what I'm looking at. The person tells me a lot more about the car than the vehicle a lot of the time. So think about that. And um, that'll about do what to look out for when you're buying a 150 Prado. All right, guys, have a nice day. So, so I thought we'd put up another 150 Prado and just have a look. This is kind of a good example. And they did just recently purchase this. And this is more like what I look for. It's fairly clean. Okay, it's done more Ks. The other car had only done 150. This has done nearly 220, right? See the genuine bash plates and they're fairly straight and flat. Other than we can see some sort of issue going on here. Right, we've got oil leaking out there, which is obviously from the sump. Let's hope it's not from that hit into the bash plate. So there's been a hit in the bash plate. Hopefully it's just some dodgy work with the uh, sump plug. Let's have a quick look around here again. So right in front area, the strut again, over 200,000 Ks, still not leaking, uh, which is pretty good. Let's go and have a look what you're gonna see at the other side. That one is pouring out, wet all the way to the bottom. So that's pretty bad. So as I said, you got a budget for suspension. Um, if you see something like this, you've got to start asking questions. That That's an oil leak, it is dripping. There is a drip there. They are drips, so that is an oil leak and it would need to be fixed as part of Roadworthy. Not sure if we can see what's going on down there yet. Yeah, can't see, we're just going to have to get that off and have a look at it. It's alright, we're doing a service, so we'll check it out. Same sort of thing, the turbos still generally look good. Alright, we'll have a look around, then you can see the difference between a uh, 150k and a 2 30k what you're going to see again see drive shafts let's have a good look at these drive shafts because i said they can start looking a bit messy look at that still looks pretty good though you know what i mean 
let's have a look at this rack. See, this one hasn't got the sweat on it. So you find a vehicle with lower Ks, sorry, higher Ks, and it seems to be in kind of better condition. That That's not a good look at that leaking strut, but um, what else would be looking for? I've already had a quick look at those lower control arm bushes. Again, let's start at the back. What else do I like? A car that's got no tow bar. A tow bar might be handy, but if you're not towing, or even if you're gonna, look, you know this vehicle's done no towing because it's got no tow bar. You know, just have a look, make sure it hasn't been removed. Unlikely, but you never know. No, no tow bar. Beautiful, it's a white GX, nice and light on its feet. It's done it easy all its life. Um, plenty of brakes. Tires look all right as well. Okay, so we talked about that fuel filler hose, whatever. You know, it looks fairly stock. It's probably, you know, may have missed a few services. Um, again, check for playing things, front and rear wheels and whatever. You can see plenty of grease being put in there. So that's probably been well enough lubricated. Again, like I said, they don't leak oil. This is not an oil leak, this is damage, right? It's either been damaged from the bash plate, something hit it, which I don't think so. It's probably just someone with their dodgy, didn't do up the sump plug or didn't change the washer or something like that. Now, let's have a look at these bushes, just to give you an idea, see that one? Beautiful, high Ks and there's nothing wrong with it. So, might have something to do with how fast people like to race over speed hunts. So the way you look after the car is also how you drive. So if someone's driving it that's racing around belting over speed humps and that, that could be a contributor to what's wrecking your bushes. Same as if you do a lot of off-road and you're a rough driver. Look at this one compared to the other car. So you know splits in there whatsoever, right? I'll try and hold it steady for you. Nothing, nothing. They're good bushes, nothing needs to be done. So this car, because it's been driven nice for over 200,000 Ks, just saved them, you know, hundreds or a thousand bucks worth of uh, front lower control arm bushes. Anyway, guys, I hope you get the picture. Just trying to point you in the right direction of what you might want to look out for. It's more trying to pick out, look, you can see here, this has been dirty. It's been cleaned, whatever. That's all right. That's better than something that's all shiny clean all the way to the end. It's probably been repainted because it's been in a bingle, which a light touch of bingle on a new bar, there's nothing wrong with that. Depends how hard it got hit. And if it bent into the, you know, the chassis and the engine, if it hit the engine, the front of the engine and push the engine back and like I said, mounts can get bent and you can have vibrations and things out of alignment that you sort of never get right. They're the vehicles you don't want, you know what I mean? The lemon, um, and it's caused by the accident, not the, uh, and that, look, I'll mention one thing, these flaps missing. I'm at the point, I'm thinking, okay, the engineers put them there for a reason, but I don't think we need them. The, the dirt and mud is not getting thrown sideways, it's going backwards, forwards and over the top. There's nothing passing in between, in and out of there. They're not that good that they seal anything that well anyway, and it actually leaves it open for better inspections and uh, being able to get to the, see the bolt at the bottom of the timing belt, or you know, over this side, you know, this one's probably in place, uh, sort of, there's some clips missing, but you know, that's where you can access to change the alternator. Anyway, guys, that's your pre-purchase things to look out for. Front lower control arm bushes, Look, you heard it all in the earlier part of the video, so I'm not going to repeat myself. Hope you get the picture. Hope that helps. See ya.